up on jack stands yet again let's go today we're going to be working on the front diff we're going to be replacing the fluid in there the manual calls for every 30,000 miles you want to change your front and rear diff fluids uh, in a previous video i did the rear diff fluid and today we're going to be doing the front i just uh jacked up the car took off the passenger side in north america uh wheel uh that's to gain access to the fill bolt which is right there above the drive axle boot uh that's gonna be an eight millimeter hex and underneath you're gonna need another eight millimeter to pull off the check bolt here this is the diff fluid check uh level so you want to be able to crack all this the first one is the fill one then you want to crack this one here there's another eight mil and this one is a t70 yeah it's a t70 torx torx 70 and then you got the eight mil so just two two things you're gonna need a breaker bar if you have one and uh, you're gonna need to remove your wheel to make it a little bit easier. You'll also need a fluid transfer pump uh, to get fluid up in there. It's kind of in a weird place, so uh, if you have any fluid transfer pump, you're gonna it's gonna be very useful. The fluid I'm gonna be using is Amsoil 75 weight 90. This is 100% uh, synthetic gear oil. You'll see things like full synthetic, and I just read that uh they can say full synthetic if it's 20 percent synthetic so uh the reason why this stuff is a little bit better is because it's actually 100 percent synthetic uh the thing to look out for is this uh 75 weight 90 and then gl5 spec that's what you want to use for your subaru differentials we have a fluid transfer pump uh i got this one from like harbor freight it's like five six dollars on sale so you know whatever you get as long as you can just transfer uh, some of this fluid, you know, up into those hard to reach places. Some people swear by the easy packs that you can squeeze. I don't know if I can get one up there. So, you know, I bought myself one of these to kind of make the job a little bit easier. Uh, right. You're also gonna need some sort of dripping pan, whatever you have, right? It's gotta catch that fluid. If I'm reading online, the front differential takes about one and a half quarts. So I bought two quarts, uh, so that should do it. So we're gonna pull off this check plug to see how much overfill there is, if there is any. There should be a little bit overfill. Uh, and you wanna let this drain out. Oh, there's a crush washer in there. That's something that I didn't buy, so I'm gonna be reusing it. But if you, you know, if you're gonna do this, you're probably gonna wanna have that that crush washer this stuff is pretty black from what i can tell right now it's pretty black so this has never been serviced before the rear was serviced uh at 15 and then now 40,000. so now i'm at 40,000 now so this will be the first time for that front so we got the drippy drops going there and now i'm going to be pulling off this the drain plug here and you'll notice that it's the diff one because it says diff right on it right and then it says check over there so diff and then check and here we're going to pull this thing out get ready Ooh, that's not bad at all actually <laughs> okay so i pulled off basically all the plugs and i've uh, rotated the wheels a little bit to kind of move those diffs around get all the oil out it looks like it's done and i believe this oil is actually in very good condition based on what, what it looked like before. Typically people don't really do the front diff. Um, it's not really needed. It, they last for a, it lasts for a long time, but I'm doing it because I just wanna learn how to do it. And um, hopefully we'll get a, you know, a little bit smoother drivetrain once we do uh, change out that front diff fluid. I reapplied the uh, drain plug and I'm gonna leave the check one open and I'm gonna leave the fill one open and I'm gonna start filling it. Uh, the idea behind this is that you want to fill it until the fluid, the diff fluid, starts coming out of the check. 
and once it starts dribbling out of the check you can that's basically full you don't want to overfill it and you don't want to underfill it um, and then also uh, if you're going to be working on your diffs make sure that your engine is cool and you know it's not you don't you didn't just drive in and you know because that fluid was kind of warm when it came out and if it was still at uh, if the engine was still at operating temperatures it, it would uh def definitely burn your hands so safety first all right so here it is again the api gl5 is the most important part 75 weight 90 uh ams oil i'm pretty sure you can use any synthetic 75 weight 90. i heard a lot of good stuff about this and i got it for a very good price compared to what you can find online with like delivery and shipping charges found a local uh, AMS oil uh, shop services with AMS oil and I called them asked them how much it was I think I got it for $18 a quart and typically you know these quarts you know any other brand that's not AMS oil is still gonna be around $20 or, or so for synthetic this is the, the setup uh, I hung it a little bit higher just so that uh, it will fill nicely and uh, we're gonna start pumping so I just gave it a little couple pumps on this second quart and you can see that the diff oil is already starting to flow out. So we're done. Um, all I gotta do is just let that extra drain out and I can keep some of this extra stuff for later if I need to. Now here's something to note. This is the, the check plug and there's a, a decent amount of sludge there. That's, that's the shavings that you get from, you know, 40,000 miles and this is the stuff that if you don't change it out, um, it'll start wearing into your gear. So uh, luckily there's a little magnet on here and then you can pull off whatever sludge there is. But that's the stuff that you're trying to get out of um, a diff when you do change your diff fluids. So let's take a look at some of this fluid. It's not bad. It's, all, you know, it's translucent still. The rear diff was a lot darker. So, but you can still see there's, there's some particulates in there and um, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but uh, there's some stuff floating in there. And that all is those um, you know, little tiny metal bits of uh, differential that have been shaved off and uh, from the bevel gears and whatnot. And that's the stuff that you wanna get rid of uh, to have a smoother diff. I spilled a little bit when I was pulling the fluid transfer pump out. And so you, you wanna get rid of any of that extra stuff because if it falls on your secondary cat it's gonna burn and it's gonna stink and right and smoke uh, so get rid of as much of it as possible and just be aware uh, when you do start up your car and that cat gets really hot you might have a little bit of smoking but once it burns off everything should be fine i've buttoned everything up uh that fill screw the check screw and the drain screw they're all tightened up now Okay, friends, that's that's it. It's pretty easy, as you can see. Uh, I think the only challenge here was uh, getting to that fill hole and then breaking some of those bolts free, but you got a breaker bar and you take off your wheel. You can do it no problem. The rear diff is much easier. But now both diffs are done and uh, the diff surface is complete. For anyone that took biology class, what does this remind you of? <laughs> so about that differential front differential has its own fluid rear differential has its own fluid but the center clutch packs in this use the cvt fluid uh as a lubricant i don't know what it, i think it's all it's transmission fluid in a manual transmission that handles the lubrication for the center diff in the manual but um in the cvt the clutch packs utilize that CVT fluid. So, you know, there are a couple of differences in uh, how the car drives and how the, the power is split between the front and rear differentials. The mechanical differential, it's gonna split power 50-50. And in the CVT's case, it's a 60-40 split from, for the front bias. And then, you know, full throttle, it's gonna lock up that uh, clutch pack and give you 50-50 power split. So there it is, back on the ground. That was really easy. I thought it was gonna be a lot harder, but all right. So it's another day and I just went out for a drive and I came back with the new front differential fluid changed. And I gotta say, it's very, very noticeable 
the whole car now that the both front and rear diff fluids have been changed is remarkably smoother there's no more clunking and kind of like oh, kind of like that gear lash feeling when you accelerate everything feels very smooth change your diff fluid if when you get the chance it's going to be it's going to make the car feel a lot more direct and smooth smooth is the is the key word right because you know with all the drivetrain upgrades that my car has uh, a lot of that power gets transferred through the transmission and through the rear axle and everything so the the differentials were a point of um you know a little bit of slop in those in those transmissions with that deteriorated fluid but now that the fluid's changed out it's it's a great feeling um kind of feels like even smoother than a new car so change your fluids Yeah, this is a one-way street, so no problem. I'm scared. I don't know where I am. I'm really having a panic attack. Okay, um, yeah. Can you turn me around? Please don't leave me back here. I'm really nervous. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. 